Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to see you. Uh, my name is Patrick Rokita. I'm the Chief Technology Officer with Titanium Platform. Titanium Platform is a company specialized in the delivery of signaling, routing, and security solutions for any generation of the mobile core. We located in the greater Boston area, Massachusetts. And yeah, because any generation of the mobile core also includes the 5G mobile core, uh, the topic I want to talk about today is the 5G standalone roaming and how the uh, security edge protection proxy comes into play there. Today, the 5G um, market is dominated by so-called 5G non-standalone networks, um, delivering yeah, more and faster data. There's nothing wrong about that. Uh, but in order to introduce services that go beyond the enhanced mobile broadband and fixed wireline access, and, and also to compete in the continuously evolving landscape of the next generation networks, the mobile network operators will sooner or later transition their network and their workforce uh, to cloud native and to the 5G standalone model. And with the 5G standalone model, um, users and devices can be delivered um, 5G standalone native services uh, that provide for massive scale or ultra low latency. And um, one of the important aspects in order to monetize the 5G standalone services uh, by addressing verticals is also the delivery of uh, network slicing. Uh, we are delivering secure uh, network subsystems with dedicated quality of service characteristics. It all can be deployed, uh, but the question is what happens, uh, how, how, how these services can be delivered continuously to users and devices that basically move uh, between countries, yeah, that basically roam uh, between countries or that uh, move between private and public networks. There are, there are many use cases uh, for when the user uh, or the device uh, leaves the boundary of the home mobile network. And in order to continuously deliver these services to users and devices, um, you need uh, 5G standalone roaming. Uh, the 5G standalone roaming makes this service continuously available to the users and devices. And um, I know that there are already has been and still is a lot of discussion how to best deliver 5G standalone roaming services. And um, the model I want to elaborate uh, on today is the 5G standalone roaming based on the bilateral trust. The bilateral trust model is uh, standardized by the GSMA Association, and it basically manages trust between the roaming partners. And the obvious um, yeah, guess, uh, or bad is that the roaming partners are the mobile network operators. But uh, what I want to bring into play here is also so-called trusted IPX service providers, uh, because these can effectively help the mobile network operators manage uh, the trade-offs between um, security operations and, and business concerns. And, and I will, I will uh, spend uh, more uh, words on that. So while the MNOs are responsible for the delivery of the 5G standalone services, they can either uh, get involved uh, in the um, 5G roaming agreements directly, uh, or they can utilize um, uh, uh, trusted IPX service providers. The IPX service providers can um, add uh, value-added services to the IP interconnects that are happening uh, and to the traffic that is, that is flowing uh, over the IP interconnect networks. And, and obvious value-added service is managing the uh, IP interconnect connections and, and, and the trust uh, yeah, between, that is now between the IPX service provider and the remote MNOs. But before we basically proceed, let's look at the, at the bilateral trust agreement uh, in, in, in more detail. Um, uh, the IP interconnection in 5G standalone roaming scenarios is uh, established and protected by so-called uh, 5G security edge protection proxy. It's a standards defined 3GPP element uh, out of the 5G core network functions. And uh, SEP effectively safeguards the uh, IP interconnect communications uh, between the uh, roaming partners um, uh, against uh, yeah, fraudulent network access and, and um, content, message content spoofing. 
uh, and and so engages engages uh, in 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 a, in a, or enforces an increased usage of the 5G standalone services and the monetization of these services in, in roaming scenarios. And as already mentioned, um, when mobile network operators involved in 5G SA roaming, they need to establish this, this bilateral trust. And usually um, a secure connectivity is uh, done uh, with so-called cross-certification, but that was considered to be operationally very complex uh, considering the management of hundreds of 5G uh, interconnect agreements uh, between the roaming partners. So with that, the bilateral trust model is a little bit, dif is a little bit different from the security point of view that we know from the standard uh, transport layer security and mainly means uh, to exchange issue certificates between the roaming partners, which is less operatively complex uh, than uh, doing this so-called uh, cross-certification. And, and this is exactly where a lot of discussion is going on, uh, this trade-off between security and the operational complexity. And yeah, the bilateral trust management is less operationally complex. And here you see that sometimes the security must be considered uh, uh, or outweighed or compared to how operationally complex uh, high or low security could be or mid security could be. So it's a trade-off here. Between the security edge protection proxy, the connectivity, the secure connectivity is uh, established by so-called uh, security capability handshake. So the uh, uh, endpoints, they exchange their, their, their security capabilities. And from that, uh, uh, and with the establishment of the trust, uh, all the traffic flows between the endpoints uh, uh, in encrypted way. So you have no access basically to the information uh, that is uh, uh, forwarded uh, between the mobile network operators. It's, it's, it's all encrypted. And, and, and for sure, the security edge protection proxy uh, provides for a lot of uh, uh, functional uh, features, and uh, some of them are uh, shaping the minimum viable product. Some of them are uh, proprietary or, or value-added uh, features uh, that um, distinguish the uh, product uh, vendor from, from uh, its competitors. So, of course, the security edge protection proxy must be able to set up the connection and, and protect uh, the connection from, from uh, fraudulent access. It also sets up the trust and validate the trust with every message that is utilizing this connection. And this validation of trust is basically a very important aspect uh, because uh, this validation of trust is normally not seen in, in regular uh, security connections as we, as we know them uh, from today. It's, it's a specialty of the bilateral trust uh, deployment model. And then, of course, once all the uh, secure connectivity and the uh, uh, trust is in place, you can forward messages between the mobile network operator in a secure way. You know? When it comes to additional services, then, of course, the SEP can uh, inspect or can be able to inspect any message it forwards and can modify the message on the fly. It can remove add parameters. And this is basically a great capability of the security edge protection proxy to increase the fault tolerance between networks of different, uh, between networks that use vendors with different product capabilities where there might be a shortage on implementing some 3GPP functionality and, and what then results in, in establishing in the establishment of the connection to fail. So message screening modification is not only a great um, functionality to identify and mitigate signaling threats, it's also a great capability to increase the interoperability between products of different vendors and provide for a certain, um, uh, certain level of, of fault tolerance. And of course, because all the uh, traffic is uh, traversing the security edge protection proxy uh, is unencrypted, um, or decrypted, then um, on, the, on the security edge protection proxy, you can uh, integrate uh, this product with value-added services that provide, for example, for steering of roaming. And of course, because uh, security edge protection proxy is one of the standardized uh, 5G core network function, it is uh, uh, by definition defined as a cloud-native uh, network function, and with that, this product greatly benefits from the cloud-native resiliency and scalability. Uh, as, we, as we know it from, from cloud-native deployments. I mean, this is on the technical side, but to be honest, uh, the real challenge is, is somewhere else. Yeah, the real challenge is that uh, mastering 5G security requires a lot of uh, security-related knowledge, 
It requires uh, capabilities, tool sets uh, to, to identify and mitigate uh, signaling threats. And at the same time, the mobile network operators you know, may not want to manage hundreds of IP interconnect agreements themselves. There are mobile operators uh, around the globe that rely on uh, IP interconnect service providers. So in this presentation, I, I want to highlight how the IP interconnect service providers can effectively help the mobile network operators to manage uh, the trade-offs, yeah, as I mentioned, between the security operations and, and business concerns. So there are important questions to answer, uh, or the mobile network operator should answer. Do they even have a security edge protection proxy available? Um, uh, if they have this product available, do they have the necessary security skills? Yeah? Can they uh, cope with uh, connecting to the IP interconnect network directly? And then, as I already mentioned, how many bilateral trust agreements do they want to manage themselves? So here where the trusted IPX service provider comes into play, um, in case the mobile network operator does not have uh, the product available, uh, it can outsource this product uh, to the trusted IPX service provider. That's seen in the upper part of the slide. And, and the trusted IPX service provider basically maintains the uh, identity of the, of the mobile network operator towards the 5G interconnect network and takes responsibility on managing the connections and the traffic in a secure and reliable way. Yeah. There is also the other use case where the mobile network operator has a local SAP but either does not have a security edge protection proxy that provides the necessary capabilities to cope with the threats uh, that may come uh, out of the uh, IP interconnect network, or they don't have the necessary skills or tool sets, um, or they just want to use the local SAP for managing a uh, smaller amount of trusted, of, of, of connections to trusted uh, uh, roaming partners. Uh, there, is this, uh, there is this saying that 95% of the traffic goes to 5% of uh, roaming partners, and 5% uh, yeah, of the traffic goes to 95% of roaming partners. So they can manage selected uh, uh, roaming partners directly, where they feel skilled enough uh, um, and, and trust these partners. And at the same time, they can host uh, another SAP um, uh, with uh, their uh, trusted IPX uh, uh, service provider. And, and these two SEPs, the local SEP and the hosted SEP, then communicate with each other. And then for connectivities uh, where the mobile network operator does not want to be involved in, uh, the IPX service provider manages uh, this business uh, in, in care of the mobile network operator. Meaning the IPX service provider again exposes the uh, identity of the uh, mobile network operator on the IPX network um, um, so that. Um, yeah, the identity is preserved in any of these uh, uh, 5G standalone roaming scenarios. So that is about um, the different uh, flavors of the security edge protection proxy. Uh, the product can fulfill uh, being uh, locally deployed or outsourced or hosted. And, and with that, each mobile network operator in conjunction with a trusted IPX service provider can basically set up any initial business model and then later on migrate to, to another deployment model. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is very important to understand from this picture that here the security edge protection proxy basically solves the first hop yeah, that the mobile network operator sees. It does not need to connect to the IPX network directly. It basically solves the first hop by involving a trust, trusted IPX service provider. And then, of course, it's the role of the IPX service provider to deal with the um, security um, uh, and, 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 and reliability uh, of the connections that go via the IP interconnect network. It must be said that um, today the number of uh, mobile network operators that have the capability uh, for, for 5G standalone uh, roaming is still low, but it will definitely will increase for the reasons that I already mentioned. Uh, the benefit of doing this uh, deployment right now is that you have quite a, a nice overview of what's going on around the globe. Yeah? Later on, when you, when you, when you basically join, join this, this, uh, this, um, this business uh, later, years from now, you will already uh, face a much higher complexity and much higher threats than it's the case today. So right now, the um, 
uh, the deployment uh, in this uh, bilateral trust model is, is something that works nicely uh, and can be basically incrementally evolved uh, uh, as the uh, number of 5G standalone interconnects will grow and when we start to see also players in the IP interconnect networks that, um, yeah, we must protect the communication uh, from. So that was on the, on, the, on the different flavors of the security edge protection proxy because this uh, event also touched, touched uh, a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, touched a lot on automation and autonomy. I would uh, also like to spend one slide on how to basically utilize cloud native technologies uh, uh, to provide for efficient and fully automated rollouts. Yeah. It is true that with a cloud native technology, you have too many moving uh, parts in, in your network uh, that you could basically manage, uh, deploy and manage manually. It's, it's no longer possible. You cannot look at gigabytes of logs every, every single day and, and monitor just everything. So having uh, automation and autonomy uh, in place is inevitable when deploying cloud native uh, um, uh, rollouts. And, and this process is one of the examples how to basically deal with that. It's just one of many. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that it needs to be exactly done that way. But, you know, two years ago we walked these narrow paths uh, that now are slowly turning into roads and, and avenues, uh, meaning we start seeing patterns um, uh, in the deployment and, and operation of cloud native function that is allowing us to identify technologies and processes that can be reusable. And, and, uh, uh, and, and one of these technologies that we see is the use of uh, GitOps and continuous deployment. So in this picture, you automate the process from the delivery uh, till the deployment on uh, yeah, a container orchestration framework like Kubernetes. Uh, the delivery happens automatically every time you release uh, a new container or a new Helm chart. Uh, both are necessary to deploy a cloud native service. It is pushed into the uh, uh, customer's uh, repositories and from there it's collected on something that is referred to as the single source of truth, which is usually a Git-based uh, uh, implementation. And uh, deployment artifacts, which are the container images and the Helm charts, are supplemented by uh, declarative specification that um, define uh, the very special deployment yeah, on site. And, and the declarative speci specification, we also uh, heard about uh, the need to standardize uh, uh, deployment artifacts and, and the processes um, uh, so that uh, there is no vendor login. They should use uh, standard declarative languages like YAML. And they should use them across the, across the board for everything, yeah, for configuration, certificate management, for deployment. That's, that's really necessary. Otherwise, yeah, the more uh, the vendors uh, bring in uh, from the proprietary side, uh, the higher the vendor login and uh, the, the, the bigger the pain to automate these processes with standard APIs. So once you have everything, everything stored on Git, which acts as a single source of truth, and it really needs to be a single source of truth, uh, you can... Uh, uh, move on with uh, continuous deployment. There are tools for continuous deployment that, that basically um, yeah, communicate to, to the single source of truth. And whenever there is a change, they pick the change and apply it to the, to the yeah, pre-production or production systems. Example of these tools is uh, yeah, Argo CD or Flux. You see Argo CD here as an example. And, and these tools greatly help in, in automating uh, the entire rollout. Uh, um, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that uh, change is, the, is uh, applied to the productive network or the production, production network directly. It can work with different workflows, such as doing pre-tests in a pre-production or staging environment. And, and once the KPIs that are being moni constantly monitored show that the change is okay, it can be um, uh, roll, um, uh, rolled out um, uh, in, in, the, in the production system as well. And in our processes that we, that we utilize uh, with our cloud native functions at, at Titanium Platform, uh, we are capable of uh, yeah, satisfying this entire process end to end to fully automate the deployment of the 5G uh, security edge communication proxies. And, and we can create even multiple instances of the security edge protection proxy using a single um, uh, lifecycle management process. Uh, creating multiple instances help um, in case you're connecting um, uh, subsidiaries of a tier one operator uh, uh, to, to a IP interconnect networks because the subsidiaries, they can have different needs 
how to basically connect to the IPX network. Some of them may need the outsourced set, some of them are fine with the hosted set. So that's for the deployment process. And as I mentioned, there already has been and still is a lot of discussion how to best deliver 5G roaming services and, and, and when. And, and yeah, because this event is about network now, then the question when delivering 5G standalone roaming services is possible today. And I'm proud to share that uh, just recently Deutsche Telekom Global Carrier and Titanium has commercially deployed uh, uh, the Titanium cloud native platform and uh, the Titanium uh, 5G security edge protection proxy that ensures um, yeah, faster, more reliable, and more secure uh, 5G standalone roaming services to users um, around the globe. And we have more of these activities uh, ongoing and uh, are happy to see that the capabilities of our cloud native products, uh, both from the functional operational perspective, resonate across our customer base. So we have strengthened a Titanium platform. We have strengthened our capabilities to deliver, deploy, and operate our cloud native product portfolio that now not only comprises of 5G core network functions, but also of selected legacy products that have successfully undergone the transition to cloud native. And at the same time, we are supporting customers uh, that um, still utilize physical and virtualized infrastructures. So managing the cloud native transformation journey together is the key message here. And with that, I'm at the end of my presentation, and I'm ready to answer any questions. Thank you. Got any questions? Hi, my name is Sham. Uh, thank you for the the roaming security, which is uh, is very important um, as I work in this area. So, so the, the the we have we had SS7. We had diameter, and now with SEP, are we still going to have the uh, the diameter roaming exchanges in the in the outside in, in the interconnect world, or do you see any trends uh, changing over that diameter infrastructure? Thank you. So uh, I I would answer the question in a way that uh, 5G standalone roaming provides for a significant higher. Uh, significantly higher level of security than the traditional uh, roaming. Yeah. Basically, the security uh, in roaming scenarios didn't effectively exist in 2G, 3G, uh, and 4G networks. For 4G, there is diameter end-to-end -end security defined by the GSMA association, but the real security level is now delivered uh, in the 5G standalone roaming scenarios. Definitely, the handshake and, and the bilateral trust model, hop by hop TLS, um, at some point when the discussion uh, defines how to do that application layer security is something that you really want to implement in your 5G between the 5G standalone networks because in 5G standalone with all these new cloud native services the users and devices will engage in these services with confidence and 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 this uh, bilateral trust model defined by GSMA is uh, operationally doable yeah that's 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 for sure and it's uh, dynamically extendable. Yeah? GSMA works on, on um, automatic uh, discovery of the security edge protection proxy. The question is whether the mobile network operators want that or not. But uh, yeah, and, and with the security capability uh, handshake negotiation, you can basically set up uh, dynamic uh, uh, connections between the roaming partners. My bet is that this may come in the start. Uh, the mobile network operators will still prefer to do bilateral, bilateral uh, roaming agreements and trust management um, as, a, as part of a manual process yeah, to basically have control and learn uh, to what extent their capabilities and, and tool sets are sufficient in the mitigation uh, of, of signaling threats. Thank you.